Join us this week as we trek over the Pyrenees and into France, where we stop off for a very special sulphur-smelling soak before heading to meet family. So for the first time in a while we got up relatively early, about 8am. That was partly due to wanting to beat the crowds and also the cold woke us up because for the first time in a while it was probably in the minuses. Definitely in the minuses. From what my phone said this morning it was about zero degrees when we woke up. So that meant last night was a chilly one. We made our way down to the Roman hot springs for about nine o'clock when it opened. And we made use of the facilities, including showers and toilets. So for only five euros, you get access to all the pools and all the facilities as well. It's absolutely brilliant. Our top tip, as always, is to go early because it was really quiet when we went and now it's uh, very, very busy. Yes, there's two different pools. The bottom one, which is 37 to 38 degrees Celsius, and then the top one, which is quite a little bit warmer and where we hung out for quite a while is about 41 degrees Celsius. There is a little waft of sulfur every now and again. <laughs> it's a bit like a bath of egg and cress <laughs> mixture. And right now, as you can probably tell, it's snowing. Nothing like a bit of variety on your travels. And it was only yesterday, it was a little bit too warm in the cab. It was about 21, 22 degrees outside. So we weren't intending to make a vlog as we're in a bit of a rush, so this video might be slightly Higgledy piggledy, but we couldn't resist making a video to show you guys what we have found. And yes, I will be getting a haircut quite soon, <laughs> hopefully. You might be able to guess he's washed his hair. Yeah, it's looking better, but uh, it's also looking worse at the same time. So we've really, really enjoyed this spot, but it's time to move on. We've got to meet Meg's dad tomorrow. Uh, what day is it today? Yes. Thursday. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's tomorrow. Yeah, so we've got to meet Meg's dad tomorrow in the Bézier region of France. We don't know exactly where, but we've got to start heading that way. Um, and so, finding a spot, to be fair. I'm supposed to be sorting that Yeah, out. we've got a spot for tonight, though. It's about a two-hour drive away, so we best go now before it gets dark. We drove some truly amazing roads as we made our way north, descending out of the mountains into the Long du Coussillon region. So a short while ago we arrived at our destination of Dulaxus Perimpetus. <laughs> I'll uh, have to put the name up on screen because I'm not exactly sure. It's a very small little town. It's a very picturesque area. The drive felt longer than I thought it would, although it was absolutely beautiful. We've been stalked by a rainbow most of the way and it was really, really nice. However, as we've arrived, the wind has really picked up and it's shaking the van a bit, so it could be quite an interesting night tonight. Hopefully nothing's gonna fall on the roof. I don't know if you can see and uh, hear that. And yeah, so we're gonna move on tomorrow. So this is just a flying visit because we've got to still make it on a little bit further northeast tomorrow. So we're gonna get some stuff done, have some food, chill out, there are toilets here. Um, we stocked up on water at the last place, so we're good for that. So for tonight's tea, we've got Italian flatbreads, kind of like fajita kind of things, but with um, cauliflower, Cajun, a bit of garlic aioli from Spain, but I've made a boob. I've only bought three flatbreads. I thought the pack was a lot bigger than that, so I'm slightly disappointed and we might have excess filling, but anyway, it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. I don't know if you can hear the wind, but we are like rocking side to side. It is quite unreal, isn't it? It's gonna be fun sleeping tonight. Yeah. And as if by magic, we have been transported to another world. The sun's out and we are in uh, Gorge de Heretic. Um, which isn't exactly in the Beziers region. We've had a bit of a plan B. We're gonna come out into the countryside and then into Beziers. So we're here waiting for Dad and Marie to rock up. I've got supplies and we're happy. It'll be a few hours before the rest of the party arrives. So we're trying to be productive, but you can't be productive without brain food. That obviously being a chocolate muffin and coffee. That's pretty much our staple diet at the moment. I was going to say that. <laughs> the confectionery. Mm. 
Perfect. Cal's favourite oh, treat. Oh, yes. He keeps me going. And uh, it's been very nice here. There's a limited phone signal, which is actually quite nice because I'm very, very easily distracted. So I've been able to crack on a bit with some videos. And we've got a few more hours yet. Lovely sunny uh, day, so we've got plenty of solar power to use. And yeah, I'm feeling quite good. So the family arrived late last night and we caught up with a bit of cheese and port as you do. So now we're going to go for a walk in the gorge. We've checked our all trails map app to, uh, to see where the best routes are. So let's go. Yes, it was the special port from our Porto adventure. It went down a treat and was a new discovery for all of us. We meandered our way through the valley and across the gorge. We were in the O Longdock Regional Natural Park, a rich landscape with protected species and important habitats. <laughs> this is an area that we will certainly return to in the future. It's the perfect location for hiking and wild camping. The landscape, the quiet and the surrounding nature is where we love to stay and explore. As the sun was shining we made our way to the beach, only a short drive away. Any chance we get to feel the sand in our toes or paws, we take it. Every time we arrange to meet up with my dad, Marie and Suki, we try to be near the coast. Later on that day we headed into Béziers, one of the oldest cities in France, located on the River Orbe and the Canal du Midi, where we strolled along the towpath in search of the magnificent nine locks of the Fonds Le Han. Construction began in 1667 and it took 14 years to complete this extraordinary feat of engineering. What a fantastic view of the city. We headed across the Pont View Bridge into the city for a spot of lunch. On our route back to our campers we saw an otter in the wild for the very first time. What a treat. The next day we had made an appointment with our marvellous mobile hairdresser to get someone's mullet trimmed. Thank you very much, Marie. So as you can see, we had a really good few days with Meg's dad and Marie. We always enjoy when they come out to visit us and it changes our dynamic a little bit. It's quite nice, we sort of slow down and um, do things at a slightly different pace. So as you can see, they've got more of a, a proper motorhome and we were lucky enough to have a shower. And I even got my hair cut because we did a live stream quite recently and I got quite a bit of abuse really. <laughs> I don't know if it's justified, but my hair's gone, so that's uh, a bit easier. Now we're going to discuss our future travel plans. At this point in time, the COVID-19 pandemic was in its infancy. Northern Italy had just been declared a red zone. We had no idea at this point a countrywide lockdown was on the horizon. Unfortunately, our trip to Naples to meet friends was cancelled so we decided to book an overnight ferry to Sardinia. And from here we imagine most of you watching regularly will know how the story continues. Join us next week as we spend the first four days of our lockdown on a secluded beach in northern Sardinia. Country number 10.